February 9. Offerings for the Tabernacle The Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred offerings. Accept the contributions from all whose hearts are moved to offer them. Here is a list of sacred offerings you may accept from them. Gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Fine linen and goat hair for cloth. Tanned ram skins and fine goatskin leather. Acacia wood. Olive oil for the lamps. Spices for the anointing oil and the fragrant incense onyx stones, and other gemstones to be set in the ephod and the priest's chest piece. Have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. Plans for the Ark Have the people make an ark of acacia wood, a sacred chest 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it inside and outside with pure gold and run a molding of gold all around it. Cast four gold rings and attach them to its four feet, two rings on each side. Make poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. These carrying poles must stay inside the rings. Never remove them. When the ark is finished, Place inside it the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then make the ark's cover, the place of atonement, from pure gold. It must be 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. Then make two cherubim from hammered gold and place them on the two ends of the atonement cover. Mold the cherubim on each end of the atonement cover, making it all of one piece of gold. The cherubim will face each other and look down on the atonement cover. With their wings spread above it, they will protect it. Place inside the ark the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then put the atonement cover on top of the ark. I will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover, between the gold cherubim that hover over the ark of the covenant. From there I will give you my commands for the people of Israel. Plans for the table. Then make a table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it with pure gold and run a gold molding around the edge. Decorate it with a 3-inch border all around and run a gold molding along the border. Make four gold rings for the table and attach them at the four corners next to the four legs. Attach the rings near the border to hold the poles that are used to carry the table. Make these poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Make special containers of pure gold for the table, bowls, pans, pitchers, and jars to be used in pouring out liquid offerings. Place the bread of the presence on the table to remain before me at all times. Plans for the Lampstand Make a lampstand of pure hammered gold. Make the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece, the base, center stem, lamp cups, buds, and petals. Make it with six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches will have three lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms complete with buds and petals. Craft the center stem of the lampstand with four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There will also be an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extend from the center stem. The almond buds and branches must all be of one piece with the center stem, and they must be hammered from pure gold. Then make the seven lamps for the lampstand and set them so they reflect their light forward. The lamp snuffers and trays must also be made of pure gold. You will need 75 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Plans for the Tabernacle Make the tabernacle from ten curtains of finely woven linen. Decorate the curtains with blue, purple, and scarlet thread and with skillfully embroidered cherubim.
These ten curtains must all be exactly the same size, 42 feet long and 6 feet wide. Join five of these curtains together to make one long curtain. Then join the other five into a second long curtain. Put loops of blue yarn along the edge of the last curtain in each set. The 50 loops along the edge of one curtain are to match the 50 loops along the edge of the other curtain. Then make 50 gold clasps and fasten the long curtains together with the clasps. In this way, the tabernacle will be made of one continuous piece. Make 11 curtains of goat hair cloth to serve as a tent covering for the tabernacle. These 11 curtains must all be exactly the same size, 45 feet long and 6 feet wide. Join five of these curtains together to make one long curtain and join the other six into a second long curtain. Allow three feet of material from the second set of curtains to hang over the front of the sacred tent. Make 50 loops for one edge of each large curtain. Then make 50 bronze clasps and fasten the loops of the long curtains with the clasps. In this way, the tent covering will be made of one continuous piece. The remaining three feet of this tent covering will be left to hang over the back of the tabernacle. Allow 18 inches of remaining material to hang down over each side so the tabernacle is completely covered. Complete the tent covering with a protective layer of tanned ramskins and a layer of fine goatskin leather. For the framework of the tabernacle, construct frames of acacia wood. Each frame must be 15 feet high and 27 inches wide, with two pegs under each frame. Make all the frames identical. Make 20 of these frames to support the curtains on the south side of the tabernacle. Also make 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame, with the pegs fitting securely into the bases. For the north side of the tabernacle, make another 20 frames with their 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame. Make six frames for the rear, the west side of the tabernacle, along with two additional frames to reinforce the rear corners of the tabernacle. These corner frames will be matched at the bottom and firmly attached at the top with a single ring, forming a single corner unit. Make both of these corner units the same way. So there will be eight frames at the rear of the tabernacle set in 16 silver bases, two bases under each frame. Make crossbars of acacia wood to link the frames, five crossbars for the north side of the tabernacle and five for the south side. Also make five crossbars for the rear of the tabernacle, which will face west. The middle crossbar, attached halfway up the frames, will run all the way from one end of the tabernacle to the other. Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to hold the crossbars. Overlay the crossbars with gold as well. Set up this tabernacle according to the pattern you were shown on the mountain. For the inside of the tabernacle, make a special curtain of finely woven linen. Decorate it with blue, purple, and scarlet thread and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. Hang this curtain on gold hooks attached to four posts of acacia wood. Overlay the posts with gold and set them in four silver bases. Hang the inner curtain from clasps and put the Ark of the Covenant in the room behind it. This curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Then put the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, on top of the Ark of the Covenant inside the Most Holy Place. Place the table outside the inner curtain on the north side of the tabernacle and place the lampstand across the room on the south side. Make another curtain for the entrance to the sacred tent. Make it of finely woven linen and embroider it with exquisite designs using blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Craft five posts from acacia wood, overlay them with gold, and hang the curtain from them with gold hooks. Cast five bronze bases for the posts. Plans for the Altar of Burnt Offering Using acacia wood, construct a square altar seven and one-half feet wide, seven and one-half feet long, and four and one-half feet high. Make horns for each of its four corners so that the horns and altar are all one piece. Overlay the altar with bronze. Make ash buckets, shovels, basins, meat forks, and fire pans all of bronze. Make a bronze grating for it and attach four bronze rings at its four corners. Install the grating halfway down the side of the altar under the ledge. 
For carrying the altar, make poles from acacia wood and overlay them with bronze. Insert the poles through the rings on the two sides of the altar. The altar must be hollow, made from planks. Build it just as you were shown on the mountain. Plans for the Courtyard Then make the courtyard for the tabernacle, enclosed with curtains made of finely woven linen. On the south side, make the curtains 150 feet long. They will be held up by twenty posts set securely in twenty bronze bases. Hang the curtains with silver hooks and rings. Make the curtains the same on the north side, one hundred fifty feet of curtains held up by twenty posts set securely in bronze bases. Hang the curtains with silver hooks and rings. The curtains on the west end of the courtyard will be seventy-five feet long, supported by ten posts set into ten bases. The east end of the courtyard, the front, will also be 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance will be on the east end, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side will be 22 and one-half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. The curtain on the left side will also be 22 and one-half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. For the entrance to the courtyard, make a curtain that is 30 feet long. Make it from finely woven linen and decorate it with beautiful embroidery in blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Support it with four posts, each securely set in its own base. All the posts around the courtyard must have silver rings and hooks and bronze bases. So the entire courtyard will be 150 feet long and 75 feet wide, with curtain walls seven and one-half feet high, made from finely woven linen. The bases for the posts will be made of bronze. All the articles used in the rituals of the tabernacle, including all the tent pegs used to support the tabernacle and the courtyard curtains, must be made of bronze. Light for the Tabernacle Command the people of Israel to bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light, to keep the lamps burning continually. The lampstand will stand in the tabernacle in front of the inner curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant. Aaron and his sons must keep the lamps burning in the Lord's presence all night. This is a permanent law for the people of Israel, and it must be observed from generation to generation. Clothing for the Priests Call for your brother Aaron and his sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Set them apart from the rest of the people of Israel, so they may minister to me and be my priests. Make sacred garments for Aaron that are glorious and beautiful. Instruct all the skilled craftsmen whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. Have them make garments for Aaron that will distinguish him as a priest set apart for my service. These are the garments they are to make, a chest piece, an ephod, a robe, a patterned tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make these sacred garments for your brother Aaron and his sons to wear when they serve me as priests. So give them fine linen cloth, gold thread, and blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Design of the Ephod The craftsman must make the ephod of finely woven linen and skillfully embroider it with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. It will consist of two pieces, front and back, joined at the shoulders with two shoulder pieces. The decorative sash will be made of the same materials, finely woven linen embroidered with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the tribes of Israel. Six names will be on each stone, arranged in the order of the births of the original sons of Israel. Engrave these names on the two stones in the same way a jeweler engraves a seal. Then mount the stones in settings of gold filigree. Fasten the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as a reminder that Aaron represents the people of Israel. Aaron will carry these names on his shoulders as a constant reminder whenever he goes before the Lord. Make the settings of gold filigree, then braid two cords of pure gold and attach them to the filigree settings on the shoulders of the ephod. Design of the chest piece. Then, with great skill and care, make a chest piece to be worn for seeking a decision from God. Make it to match the ephod using finely woven linen embroidered with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Make the chest piece of a single piece of cloth folded to form a pouch nine inches square. Mount four rows of gemstones on it. 
The first row will contain a red carnelian, a pale green peridot, and an emerald. The second row will contain a turquoise, a blue lapis lazuli, and a white moonstone. The third row will contain an orange jacinth, an agate, and a purple amethyst. The fourth row will contain a blue-green beryl, an onyx, and a green jasper. All these stones will be set in gold filigree. Each stone will represent one of the twelve sons of Israel, and the name of that tribe will be engraved on it like a seal. To attach the chess piece to the ephod, make braided cords of pure gold thread. Then make two gold rings and attach them to the top corners of the chess piece. Tie the two gold cords to the two rings on the chest piece. Tie the other ends of the cords to the gold settings on the shoulder pieces of the ephod. Then make two more gold rings and attach them to the inside edges of the chest piece next to the ephod. And make two more gold rings and attach them to the front of the ephod below the shoulder pieces just above the knot where the decorative sash is fastened to the ephod. Then attach the bottom rings of the chess piece to the rings on the ephod with blue cords. This will hold the chess piece securely to the ephod above the decorative sash. In this way, Aaron will carry the names of the tribes of Israel on the sacred chess piece over his heart when he goes into the holy place. This will be a continual reminder that he represents the people when he comes before the Lord. Insert the Urim and Thummim into the sacred chess piece so they will be carried over Aaron's heart when he goes into the Lord's presence. In this way, Aaron will always carry over his heart the objects used to determine the Lord's will for his people whenever he goes in before the Lord. Additional Clothing for the Priests Make the robe that is worn with the ephod from a single piece of blue cloth, with an opening for Aaron's head in the middle of it. Reinforce the opening with a woven collar so it will not tear. Make pomegranates out of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and attach them to the hem of the robe with gold bells between them. The gold bells and pomegranates are to alternate all around the hem. Aaron will wear this robe whenever he ministers before the Lord, and the bells will tinkle as he goes in and out of the Lord's presence in the holy place. If he wears it, he will not die. Next, make a medallion of pure gold and engrave it like a seal with these words, Holy to the Lord. Attach the medallion with a blue cord to the front of Aaron's turban, where it must remain. Aaron must wear it on his forehead so he may take on himself any guilt of the people of Israel when they consecrate their sacred offerings. He must always wear it on his forehead so the Lord will accept the people. Weave Aaron's patterned tunic from fine linen cloth. Fashion the turban from this linen as well. Also make a sash and decorate it with colorful embroidery. For Aaron's sons, make tunics, sashes, and special head coverings that are glorious and beautiful. Clothe your brother Aaron and his sons with these garments, and then anoint and ordain them. Consecrate them so they can serve as my priests." Also make linen undergarments for them to be worn next to their bodies, reaching from their hips to their thighs. These must be worn whenever Aaron and his sons enter the tabernacle or approach the altar in the holy place to perform their priestly duties. Then they will not incur guilt and die. This is a permanent law for Aaron and all his descendants after him.